Listen to Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, adventure, intrigue, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. The silvery rays of the full moon caress the sleeping city of Dar el Baida, the city known as Casablanca. But their light does not penetrate into the shadows of an almond-scented courtyard off the street of a thousand delights, a courtyard that was designed to give solace to lovers, that was never meant to be employed for murder. This is far enough. No one will see us here. All right. Are you ready to talk now? You know what will happen to you if you insist on being stubborn. I said, are you ready to talk? All right, take care of him. Huh? Hit him again. Uh. Hit him again. Uh. Again. You hear talk. Give us the information we want or we'll... Stay where you are. The gendarmes. We must get out of here. Come on. Cameron? Yeah, that's right. Steve Cameron. You're employed by the Samson Construction Company? Yeah. I'm a material super on the airbase job. Yeah. Any restricted or confidential papers go across your desk? Oh, sure. Boys in the Kremlin get plenty to find out what I know. Why do you think those jokers were after me last night? Just what did happen last night, Cameron? Uh, same thing that's happened to plenty of Joes here in French Morocco. Too many drinks, beautiful dame, and comes the dawn. Where did you have the drinks? Uh, there's a joint in the Medina called the Sword of Allah. Who was the woman? A dancer there. Never did find out her name. <laughs> Wasn't too particular at the time. Well, who was the man you met? The one who gave you the beating? I don't know. I never saw him before. How much did you tell him? Nothing. How much, Cameron? Uh, look, mister, I'm not trying to make a case for myself. I know just what kind of a jerk I was last night, and there's no excuses. Okay. The one thing I'm not, and that's a traitor to my country. You can take it from that. Huh. Well, Ken? I've heard enough, Chief. Okay, Cameron, you can go. Well, thanks. Oh, hey, um, one thing before I blow. You mind telling me what happened when the police closed in? The woman got away. The man was shot, killed. Yeah, thanks. That helps a little. What do you think, Ken? It's not a new story, Chief. Cameron was right when he said the Kremlin would get plenty to learn about the air bases we're building here. Sure they would. And how are we going to stop them now? Mm. You're thinking of Darrell McAllister? Yeah. Why the devil did he have to get killed? Mac was one of the best men the Bureau ever had. He knew the risk he was running when we sent him here to Casablanca to work his way into that spy ring. So he worked his way into it and got shot to death with the police for his pain. I know. But we've other things to think about now, Chief. Yeah, you're right. Five of the most top-secret military air bases in the world being built right here under the Atlantic Pact. As long as that spy ring's operating, the Kremlin might just as well have a front-row seat. How are we going to stop him, Kim? Mac Allister managed to get into that ring. What's been done once can be done again. Hmm. You? Why not? Oh, you've got nothing to work on, Kim. Mac got a code report back to you, didn't he? Sure, but it didn't say anything. Just two words. Golden Camellia. And we know a dancer at the Sword of Arrow is mixed up in it. So what? Where do you go from there? That's, that's easy, Chief. To the Sword of Allah. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Petrov himself greets you at the Sword of Allah. Well, thanks, Petrov. How about a table and a bottle of stock? But of course, of course. Here. Here. 
in the best table we have. You are satisfied, no? It'll do. The, the gentleman wishes for company at the table. Company? Petrov does not wish his guest to be lonely. Perhaps you see someone you would like to talk with. Perhaps the lovely Maida, eh? Maida? Who, who is, uh, she's a dancer over there? <laughs> ah, you have noticed her already, no? But then Maida makes it rather difficult not to notice her. Does she not? <laughs> you got a point. Why are you interested in having us come to my table? <laughs> Petrov is always frank. He always tells you the truth. He believes that charms of Maida will change the gentleman's orders from stock to champagne. <laughs> is Petrov right? You win champagne. If Maida comes to my table. <laughs> I promise that she will, my friend. Petrov will send them both right over. Huh? Oh, Mr. Fendi. Arms for the love of Allah. Arms for the unfortunate Effendi. Sure, natural. Willing to settle for two bits, Pagan? Your kind Effendi, most... Pagan? <laughs> well, what, what kind of a strange name is this? It's even stranger when you tack Zellschmidt onto it. Mr. Thurston, how come you knew it was me anyway? Pagan, there's not a burnoose or fake beard in the world that can hide the dollar signs in your eyes. Huh? What the devil are you doing here anyway? Well, it's, it's a long, sad story, Mr. X. The, the saddest part being that I'm broke, you wouldn't happen to have a spare 20 bucks until your next payday, eh? And if I have? Well, <laughs> being that I'm in a, such a financially embarrassed position, without funds, you understand. <laughs> what do you know about uh, golden camellias? <laughs> a cinch. I can tell you anything you want to know about. But what? Skip it. You sure you want the 20 bucks? <laughs> the style in one Berlin? Just pass it over, Mr. X. A 10 and two fives will be fine. Not so fast. You'll have to work for it. Work? Tell you about it later. We're going to have company. But, Mr. Th Quiet. Good evening, Effendi. Petrov says you have been gracious enough to invite me to your table. That's right, Maida. <laughs> Might have nice of you to accept. <laughs> you bet, baby, you bet. <laughs> Sit down, Maida. The champagne will be right here. Yeah. Would it not be more pleasant... Uh, more comfortable to become acquainted over champagne in Maida's dressing room. Uh, dressing room? Why sure, why not? <laughs> you bet. C come on. Uh, what are we waiting for? Uh, Hamid, how you want? Huh? The invitation was for one, not two. But baby... You heard the lady. But Mr. Thurston... Oh, Thurs shut up. See you later. <laughs> but, but... <laughs> ah, how do you like that? Gives me the brush up just because... Because he's jealous of my accent. Yeah, and what's that Maida cookie got to be stuck up about? I've seen plenty better fish. Even if, they, even if they do call her the golden camellia? To our future friendship, Thurston Effendi? To the future, Maida. <laughs> so, why is it you wish to speak with Maida? You must have met lonely men before. I have met enough Effendi to know you are not one of them. A man like you does not seek companionship from a dancing girl in a place like the Sword of Allah. Then let's put it this way. There are five top-secret American air bases being built around here. I happen to know a lot about them. I can learn a lot more. And information like that should be worth plenty of money to somebody. I'm afraid I do not understand, Thurston Effendi... What has all this to do with me? I want to meet that somebody. And so you come to Maida. That's right. You have made a mistake, Effendi. I am but a simple dancing girl. I know nothing concerning of what you speak. That's not what Darrell McAllister said. McAllister? Yeah. What else did this McAllister tell you? He might have mentioned the words... Golden Camellia. Well... <laughs> Come in, please. <laughs> but of course, my dear Maida. I should dearly love to join you in the estimable Mr. Thurston. Yeah, it's closer this way, isn't it, Petrov? Much less strain on the ears. <laughs> yeah, you have wonderful sense of humor, Mr. Thurston. Wonderful. Yeah. As you so rightly surmised, I was listening to your conversation from the other room. I found it most interesting. So? As I understand that you wish to make contact with someone who is willing to purchase certain information. Is that correct? Well, if you heard us talking, you know the answer. Uh, true, quite true. Well, do you want to buy? Oh, my dear Thurston, I have not said that I was that person. Uh -huh. Well, if you're not, I'm wasting my time. 
Thanks for being interesting company, my uh, No, wait, Effendi. Ah, no, do not be so impetuous, my dear comrade. It is quite possible you will be able to transact the business you have mentioned. All right. Where? When? Just off the Boulevard de la Guerre, one might find a curio shop. It is known as Tassinaris. Tassinaris. They sell and buy all kinds of objects art at Tassinaris. And if they are told that Petrov has recommended you, I'm certain you can do business there. Now, you know, Petrov, you're being pretty obliging. Maybe too obliging. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Isn't it a little dangerous to give a stranger information like that? Dangerous, my dear Tester? No, no, not at all. You knew about my friend McAllister, you knew about Maida, and you know of the golden camellias. What is there to be afraid of? Maybe a double cross? You see that chair some ten feet from where I stand? The arm is quite thick, made of strong wood. Now, despite my more than ample bulk, I can reach that chair. In an instant. A little trick I learned in the Orient, my friend. When I brought the edge of my hand down upon the arm of that chair, it snapped like a dry twig. Or like a man's neck. Hmm. No, my dear comrade Dustin. Petrov is not afraid of anyone who might seek to double-cross him. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Okay, Petrov, thanks for the help. I'll let you know how I come out of Tassinaris. <laughs> well, my dear. I think you're a fool, Petrov. <laughs> you are as frank as you are beautiful, Maida. Why did you send him to Tassinaris? You know nothing about the man. Ah, but you are mistaken, my dear. You've investigated him. You know who he is? Of course. That's why I sent him to Tazinaris. Then he is one of us? <laughs> one of us? No, Maida, my dear. He is not one of us. Mr. Tustin happens to be the man called X. <laughs> <laughs> We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. Here is an urgent message for all ship's radio officers. The Federal Maritime Administration is calling all former Merchant Marine radio officers to come back to sea. Right now, scores of ships are riding at anchor, loaded and ready to sail. Their cargoes are vitally needed by our fighting forces and by our allies. Especially right now, the need for radio officers is acute. If you have had six months Merchant Marine radio operating experience since January 1935 on any kind of FCC license, the American Radio Association, CIO, will help you get an emergency license to ship out at once. You will earn more than $600 a month. Former radio men are urged to write, phone, or wire to the American Radio Association, 5 Beekman Street, New York City which will put you in touch with the port office nearest your home. Or go now to the American Radio Association, 5 Beekman Street, New York City. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zeldschmidt. The United States is building five top-secret air bases in Casablanca. And Ken Thurston is trying to work his way into a spy ring that is known to be operating there. Now, accompanied by Pagon, he's looking for a curio shop recommended by Petrov, unaware that the suspected spy knows Ken is the man called X. Look, Mr. X, I I've been following you all around this Casablanca joint, and I still haven't seen hide of that 20 smackers. You haven't done any work for it yet, Pagan. What's that got to do with it? You ought to see how my expenses are piling up. Wear and tear on my sandals and laundry bills for this sheet I'm wearing. Uh, uh, hey, why did we stop in front of this old junk shop? This Tassinari's curio shop. We're going in. But there is no light on in there. Nobody's home. Let's try the door. Oh. What do you know? Jones and Locke? Yeah. It's the second time tonight somebody's been very obliging. See? There's nobody in here, Mr. X. N nothing but statues and lamps and, and vases and vases. Let's try that back room. Uh, so that's it. So what's it? <laughs> There's nothing in here but a row of iron sinks and 
A bunch of cameras and stuff. These cameras shoot microfilm, Pagan. Look here. This must be the last bit of stuff they were photographing. Hey, overstuffed silver dollars. They're silver medallions with a gold floral design on them. Golden camellias. <laughs> I'll bet they're worth plenty. Hamster eggs? Yeah, for once, I think you're right. Well, <laughs> there are so many of them, I guess nobody will mind if I help myself to a couple Don't of... Don't touch them! But, but I just wanted to take a look, Mr. X. Hey. Hey, what's this wire doing hanging on to this one? Wire? Get down, Pagan. Huh? Watch it! Huh? Please let me through. You can take your time, Mister. There's no hurry. Camera. That's right. If you're looking for your sidekick, the Thurston guy, you don't have to go inside. He's not in Tassinari's. How do you know? As I was just in there digging through the wreckage. There's no bodies. Cameron's right about that, Chief. I know, man, but Ken Thurston. Ken, what are the devils going on here? What happened? That'll wait, Chief. How'd you get mixed up in this, Cameron? I'm a funny kind of guy, Thurston. I don't like to be shoved around like I was last night. So I went back to the Sword of Allah to have a few words with Maida. <laughs> Only you beat me to it. That still doesn't explain what you were doing here. That's simple. When Thurston and that phony Arab left to join, I followed him. Thought maybe I could be of some help. Well, they went inside Tyson Arnie's. I waited outside. And boom! <laughs> what was it, anyway? A booby trap. Wired to the pin of a grenade. Saw it in time to drop down behind some heavy iron sinks in there. Yeah, somebody's sure playing for keeps in this game, Thurston. How about uh, dealing me in on your side, huh? Thanks, Cameron, but you're already in. You boys build those air bases. We'll take care of this. Uh, you're the boss. If you need a couple of hard fists and don't care if a hard head goes with them, you find me at the materials depot. I'll remember that. Let's get to your car, Chief. Sure, Ken. phone message, Chief. Yeah, I got it all right, but a little too late to do any good. When I reached Tazanari's, I was sure you'd been blown to Zelspit. What happened to him? He's all right. I put him to work trying to run down some information about Tazanari. Well, what about that, Ken? What did you find inside that shop? It was part of their spy ring set up, where they did their microfilm work. And they had a booby trap set for you. Yeah. Rigged to some silver medallions with golden camellias embossed on them. Golden camellias again. What do they mean? I don't know, not yet. But one thing's for sure. That grenade was set to destroy all the microfilm equipment. Destroy the... Wait a minute. That sounds like they're through with it. Their job must be over. That's the way I figure it. Oh, but good Lord. They'll be heading out of Casablanca, taking everything they've learned with them. We've got to do something, Ken, fast. I was thinking of getting an autopsy report on the cause of Darrell McAllister's death. Autopsy on Mac? For Pete's sake, why? We know the police shot him when he and Maida were questioning Cameron. How's that going to help us clean up the spy ring? Maybe I'll be able to tell you more about that, Chief. After I've had a little talk with Petrov. <laughs> so you've come back to face Petrov once again, my friend. <laughs> you are a very brave man. Very brave. But uh, foolhardy, too. I'm glad you find it so amusing, Petro. But of course, my friend, you must be very desperate indeed if you've come back here now. I take it then that Tazinari did not wish to purchase your information. We can cut the double talk, Petro, if you know who I am. Does that mean you believe you know who I am, too? It's not too tough to guess at this stage of the game. So? You gave me a warning once, remember? <laughs> Quite well. On the edge of my hand, the broken arm of a chair... Snap like the back of a man's neck. <laughs> Dad, I remember giving you the warning. Well, I'm giving you one. You and your pals have 12 hours to turn over the microfilm to me. All the information you've managed to dig up on the airbase. So? You threaten me? You call me spy? <laughs> You're right, isn't it not rather foolhardy of you to do that here? In my own rooms at this sort of hour? 
You won't try anything here, Petro. And why not? Because you don't know if I brought any gendarmes with me. And you haven't time to check. And remember, Petro, there are other things besides the edge of a hand that can break a man's neck. A rope from a gallows, for instance. Okay, Mr. X, there's been enough shilly-shallying about these 20 bucks. How's about forking over in the line? I want to talk to Tassinari first. Ha, it's already as good as dead. Sure you found him? Sure, I'm sure. Didn't I get the dope straight from my cousin Abdul? He knows all the crooks in Casablanca. No, not a Zelschmidt. Well, you know how it is, Mr. X. <laughs> there's always a black sheep in every family skeleton. Hmm. Now, there's the joint where the Tassinari Joker works. It is a timekeeper's shack. Yeah. On the airbase construction job. Pretty screwy, eh, Mr. X? Why would a character running a brack brick store want to work out here, too? Suppose we hear what he's got to say about it. Mr. X! He came from the time shack. Come on. Ooh, ooh. Looks like we're not going to talk to Tassinari. But, but there's nobody else here. There's a door leading out the back. Oh, that's right. But why did anybody shoot him anyways? Maybe this is the answer. Huh. A broken silver chain? Yeah. The kind you could hang a medallion from. You mean somebody was after one of those, of those big, thick, golden camellia things and, and shot him for it? He wasn't shot. He wasn't? Oh, but we heard it. There's a gun on the floor over there. He must have tried to shoot whoever killed him. But, but that don't make no sense, Mr. X. How did he get bumped off then? Look at his neck. Broken. So Tassinari's dead too. That's right, Chief. Ken, what the devil's this all about? Who's behind it all? Petrov, Maida, have you got that autopsy report on Makarov's death yet? Sure, sure I have. Here it is, Ken. But I still don't see what good this is going to do us. That depends, Chief. On what? On whether he died from a police bullet, or if his neck was broken. <laughs> Hello, Maida. Thurston, Effendi. That's right. I see you're packing. You going somewhere? And if I am? I was hoping you could explain a few things to me. For instance? What this medallion is doing there on your dresser. The medallion? <laughs> Why should it not be there? I have a dozen of the little lockets lying around. All with the embossed golden camellia? Of course. It is what you call my trademark. I give them away as favors. Then you don't mind my keeping this one? Why, uh, no. No, I do not mind. Though I'm a bit disappointed. Why? You ask only for a trinket. Are there no other favors you would rather ask of my either? No, I'll settle for this, thanks. A little more practical. What do you mean? Did you know that these things can be opened, my either, by twisting them apart? No, Effendi. You see? Two halves, hollow... And inside them, this. Okay, Thurston, you can drop that microfilm now. Oh, Steve. Hello, Cameron. I was wondering when you'd show up. You found out. Drop it. Sure. Get it, Maida. I have it, Steve. Good. Now get to the door and don't walk in the line of fire. Do not worry, Steve. I will not interrupt the proceedings. So you figured it out, Thurston. Well, you helped, Cameron. Yeah? How? Oh, you said you didn't know Maida's name, and then you mentioned it later. And there was your story about Maida and McAllister trying to get information out of you. Well, it sounded legit to me. Except for one thing. The police didn't kill him. His neck was broken. Yeah, what'd that tell you? 
that the two of you were really questioning him, trying to find out who he was, how much he knew. And when the police closed in, you shut him up for good. By breaking his neck? <laughs> Petrov's the lad who uses judo. He hasn't got a monopoly on it. Tassinari could prove that, too, if he were able to talk. What did he try to do? Double cross you? Get away with the film himself? Yeah. He learned it didn't pay. It's like you're going to learn it doesn't pay to buck up against me. Open the door to the corridor, Maida. Of course, Steve. Now take this gun. Stand guard outside. The gun, Take Steve? it and get out. But, Steve, Get I... out. Very well, as you wish. All right, Thurston. Now it's time for a little lesson in judo. Okay, Cameron, start teaching. But you'll have to do it in the dark. <laughs> okay, Thurston. So you smashed the lamp. As soon as my eyes get used to the dark, I'll find you easily enough. Okay, so it wasn't you. The room's not too big. I move as quietly as you can. Can't get away, Thurston. I'm coming after you. I tell you, you can't get away, Thurston. Get you. Chief. Cameron's inside here. Cameron? Yeah, he's the big wheel. What about my Maida and Petrov? We've got them. The microfilm, too. But Ken, what in blazes went on in here? A oh, little judo lesson. What? Yeah. You know something? Sometimes the best defense against judo is a good hard right to the jaw. But why did you risk it? You knew we were waiting out here. Why risk your neck like that? Cameron needed a lesson, Chief. For Darrell McAllister's sake, and all the others. He thought he could fight the world. Guns. Trickery. Well, he learned it couldn't be done. He learned it the hard way. Let's hope we don't have to teach his bosses the hard way, too. <laughs> Now, here's our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Lillian Bayef, Will Wright, Bill Conrad, and Lamont Johnson. There's a new and very dirty racket in this country that you and everybody you know ought to be wised up to. And next week, Ken Thurston really tangles with it. Of course, where there's a racket, you'll find uh, Leon Belasco with Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return at The Man Called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And now until next week, same time and station, this is Hal Gibney saying good night for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.